This is question two of the 2020 mechanics exam. Well, we've got question two. John and Alex continue their drive and take a sharp bend in the road at a constant speed of 12 meters per second. Note the words speed and not velocity. Um, draw an arrow on the diagram above to show the direction of the acceleration at this point. So assuming it's going at a constant speed and it's going around the roundabout, we'll just find the center of the circle. It's probably going to be about there-ish. Yeah, that'll do. Um, and you're going to have an arrow pointing in towards it. And we're going to name this. What do we want? The this is going to be the A acceleration. So we call this A C because it's a center pointing acceleration. Um, right, that's all they wanted. Uh, B. Calculate the size of the acceleration if the radius of the bend is 25 meters, and explain what causes this acceleration. So, in your formula sheet, I don't have it on top, like on hand. Um, Pretty sure you only get, oh no you don't actually, I'm pretty sure you get given um, AC equals V squared over R. Pretty sure you get given that. If you don't, you're probably given, in fact I'm going to pause and look it up. Yeah I looked it up, you totally do get given this formula. Um, so we're going to have 12 squared which is 144 over, what's the radius? 25. Um, and that is going to be equal to, clear, uh, 12 uh, squared, I should have just written 144, divided by 25, and that is going to give me 5.76 meters per second, negative 2. Um, and what causes this acceleration? Um, friction. I'll just write it. Right, so I said friction, which is the net force. Always use net force. Net force means it's like when you've added all the other forces, this is the only force that's left. Um, because assuming it's the force forwards, I mean, if you had a force like this, forwards, that would be accounted by the force backwards, which would be like friction and the motor force. Um, and you're going to say it points towards the center. Right. Um, next one. State two external factors that could change the motion of the car as it travels around the corner and explain how these factors would affect the motion. Hmm. So... External meaning probably not the car, so that would probably be, I don't know, oil slick on the road, if it's raining, um, you know, if it's a gravel road. I don't think they want to get into the fact that if you have the corner banked or not, because that's a level three concept, so you'd probably skip that out. Um, so probably two external factors, yeah, would definitely be just the road condition. Tires would probably be an internal factor because that's part of the car. Um, so I'll just pause and write like, and how that affect the motion. So if you any of these factors I've li listed, um, all of them would reduce the grip, so they'd reduce the friction towards the center, um, so you wouldn't be able to travel as fast. Otherwise, your radius would increase. Otherwise, you'd slide out to a further radius. Uh, right, I'll pause it and write it up near it. Right, so I said, if the road was icy or wet, this would both cause, get rid of the double S, yes, cause this would, in both cases, it should be cases, cases, Reduce the friction force, thus reducing the net force acting towards the center. Thus, the car will slide out, increasing its radius until the friction force is enough to sustain the turn, or it'll need to slow down, um, both of which are true. Right. Uh, next question. Uh, the pair continue on their journey at a constant speed of 12 meters per second. The car is fitted with a crumple zone. Alex says a crumple zone can increase the time of the impact in a, in a collision from 0.2 seconds to 0.8 seconds. The mass of the car and the occupants is 1,600 kilograms. Use physics principles and appropriate calculations to explain how having a crumple zone can make a car, this car, safer for occupants during the collision. So when it says and appropriate calculations, it's given a massive hint. It wants you to do a calculation with the crumple zone and a calculation without. So we'll do that quickly. Um, so we'll say with, we're going we're to try and find the force acting on the car. Um, so we know the mass, we know the velocities, so we know the momentum, and we know the time, so we're easy to be able to figure out the force. So with crumple zone, crumple zone, um, I'll put the formula, change in momentum equals F times, force times time. In other words, uh, put an arrow like that, force is equal to uh, change in momentum over essentially change in time, but over the time of the collision. Um, so that is going to be equal to, with the crumple zone, it is going to be eight seconds. Um, the change in momentum is going to be the, the same regardless. 
So we're going to have 12 times 1600 divided by 0 0.8, and that is going to be equal to uh, 2400. So 24, uh, 24,000, what am I talking about? 24,000 newtons, and now I'll just pause and do without because it's the same calculation. Right, uh, right so the final force is 96,000. So 96,000. Newtons. There we go. I literally just did the exactly the same without crumple zone. Same calculations, everything. Um, yeah, that's really better. That um, just a, like top tip, or I suppose you could call it. Um, this question here is exactly the same as the 2020 scholarship question five exam. Um, I'm pretty sure. I might just quickly pause. And... Yeah, totally. Is. So if you go, if you just quickly YouTube, well, it's on my YouTube channel because I do the scholarship questions. Um, if you go 2019 question five uh, C and D, um, they go into crumple zones like in the most detail that you need, um, and they're also coincidentally some schools, um, or quite a few schools, use this context as an internal for 2.2. Um, so this basically explains the whole t whole internal um, to a degree. I mean. Good luck trying to memorize the whole thing and write it in a changed context. Um, but yeah, so top tip. Um, right, so we should probably finish it off. Um, I'll just pause and write out a like, wordy answer and then discuss. Right, so I've said, as we can see, having a crumple zone reduces the force acting on the passengers from 96,000 newtons to 24,000 newtons, making it safer for the passengers. And that's it.